What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another crypto video. What is up guys, it's time for Dylan back at it again with another electronics tutorial. Once again, we are showing you guys how to build some pretty cool stuff from the Eloku Uno R3 most complete starter kit in the world. And yes, we are continuing off of our last lesson where I showed you guys how to use the ultrasonic sensor. So as you guys can see, I have a pretty cool little radar system here. There's a couple tutorials on YouTube that show you how to assemble this. They don't really tell you how to make it. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to walk you guys through the steps of setting this thing up and then from zero lines of code, I'm going to show you exactly how you can make this bad boy. And the different uh, aspect that I have incorporated into this little SODAR system, it's really not radar because radio, radar is radio waves. This happens to be sound waves. So the one difference is I've incorporated a active buzzer. So it beeps the closer you get to it. I don't know if my mic can pick it up. Let's see. The closer you get, it beeps faster. Pretty sick, right? So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to build all this stuff in today's video. So make sure you guys stay tuned until the end so you don't miss out. All right. So the first thing we have to do, of course, is get our components. So, of course, we need our Uno R3. We need our breadboard. We need five male-to-male -male jumper cables. Uh, just get two black, two red, and then one color really doesn't matter. And we need five female-to-male jumper cables. Colors don't really matter. We're going to need our servo. Make sure you take out this guy, this little guy that's in the bag. And we're going to have to position him directly in the middle, which I'll show you how to do later. We're going to need the ultrasonic sensor, which as you can see, I've already kind of attached this thing here. I see a lot of people that have this tutorial on YouTube, they use hot glue. I just use tape. You don't need to hot glue it. Just tape it. What I did was I got some regular tape like this. I ripped it right down the middle, and then I was able to tape it on the back, pull it up, and wrap it around each cylinder. And then I ran one piece of tape around the back, and it's on there pretty good. And then, of course, we're going to need our active buzzer. So the, the way I want to do this is I want to incrementally build the system. So the first thing I want to do is attach the servo. So the way I found this to be the easiest way to put this on the breadboard was to just use some tape. So I, you know, got a little roll like this. Boom. Did a little OG, little flipperino. Stick it on the bottom. And then I positioned it right here on the edge, just like that. Boom. And then I got one more piece of tape. And just to stabilize it a little more, I just kind of taped it right here, just like that. Boom. Just like that, boom, and then pull it tight, tape it on the bottom. And there you go, it's on there pretty darn good. That's really all you need. So the next thing we need to do is, of course, have our Uno R3. Now you could tape it to here, which I guess we can do. Let's just go ahead and do it. Just to fix it on there, just to make it look better than the way we had it looking earlier. Because that didn't look too good. You know, tape is everyone's favorite tool. So boom, put some tape on the bottom in a couple spots. Boom. And then of course, make sure that this end with the connections is to the back. You can just tape it on just like that, boom. So it's on there nice and good. And then what I want to do is jump over, because if you guys remember from lesson nine, boom, the way that we do this is we connect one end to the five volt, one to the ground, and then one to a pin. Now you could use any pin here. It doesn't really matter as long as we have, if you guys can see, pin nine, which is a PWM pulse width modulation. If you guys remember, pulse width modulation is the one with the little squiggly line, the tilde. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it into pin number six. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to jump the connections over to our board. So the way you could do that is just 
on one side, for example, this side, we have our ground. So I'm going to go ground over to the blue, which happens to be the negative. So as long as it's in this rail, all of our other ground connections we can put into this rail right here, this column. Okay. So same thing with the 5 volt connection. We're just going to jump the 5 volt connection boop, right on over to the red rail. Boom, just like that. So now we have ground and 5 volt going to our breadboard. So now what we need to do is we need to wire this guy up, our servo. So if we come back over to our diagram, if you guys remember, we had the brown, which is ground. So I'm going to connect. So I'm going to connect the black cable to the brown. Boom. We had the red is the power and the orange is the signal. So let's get our red cable. Red is the power. And then the orange is the signal. I'm going to use yellow. It really doesn't matter. This, I like to use red and black for power and ground just to remain consistent so I don't mix those up. Boom. There we go. And then, of course, just like I said, So as long as the red and black go into any of these holes here, it really doesn't matter. The closer, the better, I guess. That way it keeps the cable out of the way. This cable kind of bothering me a little bit. So let's kind of go like that. We'll curl it like that. And then we'll go through like that to keep it curled up. Boom. So now we're in. And then this yellow cable, any of these pulse, pulse width modulation pins over here. So I'm just going to choose, uh, I'll go with 12. Or you know what, let's go with 9. We'll stick with 9. Because that's what this lesson shows. So we'll go ahead and put it in pin number 9. It has the tilde mark, which means pulse width modulation, which means we can use it. And then, of course, we have power and ground over here on the power and ground rail that we jumped over from our Uno R3. So let's jump on over, take a look at this code. So what I want to do is open up our servo lesson so that we can see exactly how we have to do this. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Let's see. We need to copy this code. Boom. This will include the servo library. We're also creating an instance of the servo class. We're creating an object called my servo. And then what do we need to do? Boom. We need to get, we need to attach our pin. But you know what I'm going to do? I am going to create a pin. Servo pin equals 9. Boom. So we have our servo pin. Instead of hard coding this, we will use servo pin. All right, so now we have our servo pin set up. Now what we need to do is we need to tell this code what to do. Boom, I like to have it like this. Now in the main body of our code, basically the way we need to do this, if you guys remember, the servo can rotate from zero degrees all the way to 180 degrees. Now what we need to do is we need to have it smoothly start at zero and sweep all the way to 180. So how can we do that? With a loop. So let's do a for loop. So we'll do for int i equals zero. I is less than or equal to 180, which is the maximum degree that we can go with the servo. And we want to increase this by one. I mean, you could do any number. Uh, the more numbers that we have, meaning if we increment by one, it will sweep more smoothly. Because if we have it jump by five, it'll be, you know what I mean? 
So the lower we increment by, the more positions that the servo will sweep through. And now looking here, to get it to move to a position, all you have to do is just put the number in the right function or the right method, which is attached to the servo class. So right. So in here, all we need to do is just write, sorry, we need to call my servo, my servo dot write, boom, i. That way, when it loops through, it's going to use whatever the value of i is at that point of time in the loop. And then we want to delay just for a small amount of time. We don't need to delay for one whole second because that's going to make it extraordinarily jittery. Let's start with 100 and see what that looks like. So one tenth of a second is how long the delay will be. So let's plug this in and just see what this looks like. So all this is going to do is go from 0 to 180. 0, 180. 0, 180. Instead, actually, let's just copy this for loop. We're going to run it again, except this time, instead of starting at 0, let's start at 180. We want to go, instead of it being greater than or equal to, we want to be less than or equal to 0. And instead of adding, because we're starting at 180, we want to go down to 0, we're just subtracting. So I minus minus. Boom. All right, let's plug this sucker in and see what happens. So let's stack it on top of my Rubik's cube. So we're plugging it in. Darn, we need two Rubik's cubes. Plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. And what we need to do now is deploy the code. So let's see. Make sure you have the correct Uno, make sure it's in the correct port. Click run. And there it goes. Looks like we need to fix the delay because it's moving kind of slow. But let's see. It gets to the end. And then it starts sweeping back. Cool. So it's working. Let's go ahead and change this delay. So instead of it being 100, let's let's do 20, just to make it fast. Boom. Okay, we're gonna switch back. I'm deploying the code. Let's see what happens. Much better. And we can make it even faster if we want. Let's try 10. I'm gonna put in 10. 10 might be a little too fast. Okay, deploying the code. That's fast. 10 is a little too fast. We'll put it back to 20. 20 seems to be a good number. Not too fast, not too slow. Boom. All right, cool. All right, so what we need to do now, I'm going to stop it there. What we need to do now is we need to attach our ultrasonic sensor. So like I said, I already attached this thing to here. Just tape it on there. You super glue actually won't work. I tried super glue. Hot glue would probably be perfect, but then you're pretty much stuck with this thing on there. That's why I just use tape. It's just, it's not permanent. It holds it good enough. That's really all you need. So what I'm going to do is just take this part off. Luckily, we had it stop right in the right orientation. So whichever way it stopped, just have, make sure you put it on in that orientation. That was about right. And what we need to do now is wire this thing up. So let's go back, close that. We'll go back to our last lesson, lesson number 10, which shows us how to set this thing up. So the way this thing works is that we have VCC going to the five volt, ground going to the ground. So that should be pretty simple. And then we have two pins, uh, trigger and echo going to 11 and 12. Very cool. So let's just go ahead and switch back over. Now if you take a look at the pins, here actually I will wire it off of here first. So if you take a look, you can see it's labeled very nicely. VCC is going to be our red pin. So get the male to female. VCC is the power. So plug that in. Our ground 
is the one that's labeled ground. Duh. Boom. And then these other two pins, just put whatever. Doesn't really matter. Those are going to go to two pulse width modulation pins. So it really doesn't matter what colors you use. Like I said, just make sure you remember. Boom. So stick this on. So it's nice and firm. Awesome. Now we could stick this back on here. And like we said, red is power. So make sure you plug that into the power rail. Black is ground. So make sure that goes into the ground rail. Let's unplug that. We don't want this thing to be going off. Okay, and then we need, let's see, we have trigger going into 12, echo going into 11. So trigger, go into 12. And echo goes into 11. There we go. So we're now plugged in. We got our cables wired appropriately. Coming back over to our code, what we need to do now is open up our ultrasonic sensor example and do the same thing. So we have pin nine already. So like we said, we did we did the trigger, which is white, going into pin number twelve. So const int. Trigger pin equals, which one is it again? Trigger white 12. Boom. And then we have our const int servo, sorry, echo pin, which equals 11. Boom, boom. Echo 11, echo 11, trigger 12, trigger 12, boom. Okay, so after we have wired our pins, what we need to do now is we need to include the SRO4.h uh, header file or the library. It's really a header file, which is part of the library. But we need to include SRO4.h. Boom. And then we need to create an instance just like we did here. Boom. We'll copy that. Bring it on over. Boom. Create an instance called my sensor. Uh, calling the constructor and passing in the pins. So echo pin and trigger pin. Trigger pin. And then we need to create, just like we did here, long, except we're going to call it distance. Boom. Okay. Then we need to, just like here, serial begin. This is going to set the baud rate of our serial monitor. Uh, so we could just literally copy that. And then what we need to do is just like we did here, we're going to find the distance and print it out to our uh, terminal. So we can literally just copy all this code right here. Copy it. Go here. Paste it. Boom. Except this is going to be called distance. Distance right, is going to equal my sensor. Dot distance and we looked at this uh, method in our last lesson we looked at the code exactly what it does all it does is returns the distance in centimeters that's really all we need and then what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to print to the serial monitor the distance and we're going to add right after that cm centimeter we're just going to literally copy this boom and we're going to paste it boom down here because it's the exact same thing and really what we could do is we could make a function int print distance and we're taking in distance now the reason why you want to do this is because we're copying code here so we could literally just put it here boom and then we could go print distance distance. 
Same thing. We'll paste that there. And we are ready to run this. Let's take a look. So plugging this thing back in. Switching our view. Boom. We're going to run this code. Make sure it works. So I did make a mistake. This print distance, it needs to go up here. So we had it down at the bottom. We had it down here. Except it needs to be above the loop. Because if it's down here, it's not going to know what it's talking about because it hasn't gotten down there yet. So you need to put it up here in the top. So under int distance, we can put it right there. Bingo, bango. Press run. And you can see, boom, we're sweeping, coming back, looking at the serial monitor. Boom, we can see it's printing out data. Boom. Boom. Cool. So what we need to do now is we just need to create a filter. So what we wanted to do is just not detect distances farther than 40 centimeters. That's what I've seen most people doing online. So we'll just stick with 40 centimeters so it's not too far. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to attach our active buzzer and set up the beeping mechanism. So we're literally almost done. But let's start with attaching our beeper. So what we need to do now is we need to attach our active buzzer. And if you guys remember, the active buzzer has a positive and a negative side. Uh, well, it's easy to see because the positive side is longer on this, unlike the passive buzzer for some reason. They wanted to make it a little strange and make them the same length, but whatever. If you guys get confused, just look right there. It'll show you which side is which. So you need two female to male wires. I just left them attached just to keep things nicer. And we'll keep purple as positive, P for bean, and gray for ground. And we're just going to go into pin 8. It looks like it goes into pin 12, but we're not going to use pin 12. We'll use pin 8. So, so pin 8. Let's go back to our view. And we are literally just going to go gray into ground. This one into pin 8. Since it's so close, what we're going to do is we're going to use the ground on our Arduino. So if you guys can see, the gray will go into the ground. Boom. And then this pin will go into 8. like that. Bingo, bingo. See, we got our passive buzzer set up. Everything's looking good. We're ready to rumble. So let's come back over to our code, get this thing wired up so we can implement our beeper. So coming in here, we can go to the active code, which is the code from lesson number six or seven, whichever lesson this was. Boom. So this is it right here. So just like last time, we need to come up here. I want this to be in order just because it looks nicer. Const int buzzer pin, and that equals, what do we call it? Eight, eight, boom. And what we need to do now is just set up the pin mode just like we did last time. So pin mode. That needs to go in our setup. So we'll put it at the top. Pin mode. The first one is the pin, so buzzer pin. And then the mode. This is going to be output mode. So that way our buzzer is set up. Okay, so just like I said, we want to create like a filter that will only beep if it's in range, right? So the range that we're going for, and you can change this later, doesn't really matter. We'll just do 40 centimeters because that's what that's what it tends to be with all the other tutorials online. So we'll just stay consistent. So I think the best way to do this is we got to create an if statement. The distance is less than 40. And this code right here, we're just going to copy and paste it right down in here. Or really, we can just create a function, another function, just like we did with this last one. But we'll just go ahead and stick it here for now. So what do we want to do if it's in range? So we're going to be using a function called map, which is basically mapping one value to another value. So for instance, when it's at 40 centimeters, 
beep at this rate. When it's at zero centimeters, beep at this rate. So that's what we're going to be doing. So what we can do is we can create an int. We'll call it the beep interval. So the first very the first parameter is going to be the value that we want to base this off of. So we're basing it off of the distance. So then we need to go the maximum and then the minimum of that distance. So 40 is our max range, zero is our minimum range, and then we want the beep interval, right? How or the the beep rate basically or how long we want to leave the beeper on. So for 40 we want it to beep uh, longer. And the closer you get, right? It beeps faster. So we'll go with 50 and 1. This is what I used for the other example. But you can change these, right? You can change this. This will be the range, basically, which is this right here, which is all based off the distance. And as you guys can see, the maximum this thing can pick up is 1,182 centimeters. So you could literally put 1,182. It doesn't matter. And then you could change the beep rate. If you were to go off those values, you probably want to use like 100 and one just to make it a little bit more realistic so that's how you do this and then we need to create right we need to beep it beep it uh, what we're going to need to do to beep it is we're going to need another function well so for that other function what we could do is we could kind of like get the beep rates off of this over here like uh, basically we could use this right here because that's essentially what we're going to be doing uh, so we can come down here and we can call this uh, we can make a function it doesn't need to return anything so we'll just say void beep the buzzer um, and then what we need to send in is the beep interval which is really like a beep delay. Then what we need to do is like literally take this code right here because this is what activates the buzzer, right? So we can copy this, paste it here, right? So we're doing digital write. It's not buzzer, it's buzzer pin. Remember that when you send a high signal through digital output, it's basically turning it on, sending a one, which is send voltage. The delay, this is what we want to delay, right? We're turning it on. How long do we want to leave it on based on this beep interval, which is based off of this right here? So we're sending in, we're going to be sending in beep interval. So we will use beep interval right here. Beep interval. And then we're going to turn the buzzer off. So buzzer pin low. And then delay, we don't want it to delay for half a second because what that will do is, because think about it, we're looping through and we're moving the servo, right? It's moving the servo. When we're using the distance method, if you guys remember, it's not even half a second, it's like a thousandth of a second. So this does not take any time, negligible. If we take too long in this function, this for loop will take forever to go through, which will make the servo jittery. It'll be 180 times, not okay. So we need to keep these numbers to a minimum. Same with these values here. That's why we're going with 50 and one. 50 being 1 20th of a second, right? So that's still, uh, we could make this number a little bit smaller, maybe even 40, but we'll just stick with 50 for now. And that's really all you need in this function. Now what we need to do is we just need to call it. So the way we can do that is just by saying beep buzzer and send in the beep interval. Boom. And we copy that and paste it here. Okay, now when we run it, the moment of truth, let's plug this sucker in. We'll click deploy. And we got some errors. Let's see what our errors are. We have an un. Oh yeah, we need to put a semicolon here. Did I forget any other semicolons? No, I think that might be it. So let's click run again. 
buzzer piz. That's not it. Buzzer pin. See, and this is the reality of programming, guys. You're going to have errors. Boom. Click run. There we go. And you guys can hear. It's working now. Very cool. So let's switch the view so you guys can see. We now have our thing working. Right now, we're about 40 centimeters away right here. So if you guys can see my hand, as we get closer, it beeps faster. But see, as you can see, when it starts beeping, I don't know if you can tell, but when it starts beeping, it kind of slows down a little bit, just a little bit. And that's because like what I was saying, in our loops, right, we're delaying 1 20th of a second plus 1 1,000th of a second. So if we make this value smaller, the 50, it probably won't be as jittery. So there's other ways to make this more smooth, but it's working. This is really all we need. I'm not going to spend too much time making this smoother just for this video, just for the sake of this video. So. That's pretty much it for this part of the tutorial. As you guys can see, we now have our beeping buzzer, our sodar working like it should. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to make this run with this radar processing uh, graphical user interface that all the other tutorials happen to have the exact same one. I wonder why. They're probably all just copying each other. So. I'm going to copy them by just using this. Now, there's a bunch of errors in here that I saw and things that didn't look too good. And that's why the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video looks awesome. I'm going to show you guys how to fix it, make it look better, and then, of course, make this code function with this uh, graphical user interface so it looks perfect. And then, of course, I'll show you what you can change in this code to make it better because that's the whole point of this, right? We're trying to learn and make our code work and make things look awesome. So that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys made it this far, you guys are awesome. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Drop a comment down below. Make sure you stay tuned for the next part of this tutorial. Because this, this is like the coolest thing that we've done so far with the Elegoo Uno R3 starter kit. So you guys have a beautiful day, beautiful night, wherever you guys are. Dylan is out.